Hello folks and welcome back to Femboy Mathematics. So today I'm gonna give you guys a taste of topology. So topology. Yeah, I know it's hot today, so I'm wearing a crop top and shorts. So no tie highs for today, so sorry about that guys. So topology. This is also known as rubber sheet geometry and it is the mathematics concerning um, objects that can be deformed. So every single shape or space as we call it in topology, um, we think of it as a ball or not really a ball, but we think of it as made out of a material that we can bend, squeeze, um, stretch of course, um, but the only thing we're not allowed to do is cut them or punch a hole into them. I mean, we can do that at some point in topology, but the general rule for playing with these shapes, playing with these shapes, is that we cannot cut them. So, there are, there are mainly, um, there are actually a lot of branches of topology, but there are four main branches. Of course, general topology, algebraic topology, differential topology, and geometric topology. So general topology deals with everything basically. So when you take a course in general topology, or some some people will call it point set topology, you guys will encounter algebraic topology and maybe some differential topology. Most notably the fundamental group and stuff like that. And also homo homotopy or homotopy, however you guys would um, pronounce it. Or maybe even simplicial competencies and homology. Okay? Um, but I guess I'm just going to give you guys an introduction um, to general topology for today's um, extra episode. So, I'm assuming you guys have a little bit of knowledge in, um, in set theory. This will require some knowledge in set theory. Okay, so we regard every shape that we study in topology as a topological space. So these things are shapes or, you know, basically things, right, mathematical objects, um, where in continuity is defined. So the main goal of um, topology is somewhat to formalize the notion of continuity around a point. So if you guys will recall in calculus, so I have, I have my x and y axis, and then I have a graph. A point on the graph is called continuous if I have a small neighborhood here in X, what I mean by neighborhood is just a set of points around a point. So I have a neighborhood or a line here. So as I approach that point in the X, uh, in the X coordinates, there is a corresponding approaching in the Y coordinates. All right. So that's what I mean by it continues at that point. So I can make, so I have a point here. We call that point continuous if I can make a sort of circle around it and I can shrink it. I can keep shrinking it without it stopping. An example of a discontinuous graph is something like this. Where, okay, I'm gonna try to make a circle around this point, but notice that when I try to shrink it, it's gonna stop here. So that's what I mean by discontinuous. So topology sort of wants to formalize this, especially the notion of an open set. So an open set is, um, basically a subset of some space or maybe it's just the space itself we're in it has points inside it but it is not bounded so i know it's a bit counterintuitive but it's basically think of it like a box without the walls so yeah the volume of something or, some, or a surface area without the line surrounding it all right so we begin with the notion of what an open set is or an open interval so remember what an open interval is. It's, it's something like this, A, B. Don't confuse this with an ordered pair. This is just notation-wise. So this defines to be the set of all, all things X that are between A and B, but are not strictly them two. So X cannot be B or A, but it lies somewhere between them. So this is an open interval. So what exactly is an open interval or an open set, the more general form? So we define that using what is called a topology over a set. 
So, recall again that the set is a collection of objects. All right, let's get to the formal definition. So there's a difference between what a topology is and what topology is. Topology is the subject, while there's another thing called a topology that we define over a set. Okay, so let X be a set. Okay, so we call a collection of subsets, which I will call tau of x, a topology, if and only if, they satisfy three conditions. One, the empty set at x itself is inside this topology. Now the reason why I'm not using the subset uh, subset notation is because the subset notation is a non-elementary notion and we're starting from the basics when it comes to topology all right so the empty set and x are inside the topology two arbitrary unions of any set alpha i'll call them alpha or um let's call no uh let's call it a inside this topology is open. So every possible thing or set that's contained inside tau is called an open set. So that's the formal definition of an open set. If they're part of this collection of subsets of a set such that they satisfy these three conditions. So what I mean by arbitrary unions of, of any um, subset of tau is open is that if I take a union, or if I combine these guys, right? If I combine these or take all elements within those sets and put them into a new set via probably the axiom choice or um, axiom replacement, then that set, that new set I have, which is the union of all those sets, is open as well. So what I mean by open is that it is still inside. Um, it is still inside tau. So that means it is closed under union. So another way of rephrasing the second condition. And then third, arbitrary intersections of any A, let's say tau, is open. So like, like how the unions of every A inside this topology is inside the topology, this time the third condition requires that any intersection between those two subsets are inside the topology. Okay, so let me move back. All right, so if I'm gonna think of X as a blob, all right, this is X over here. Um, all right, so I have two subsets, A1, A and B. If I have an all-encompassing blob inside X, which we call the topology, it must be that this here, this, this shaded region, which is the intersection of A, B, is inside that topology. And it must be that the combination of A and B, so these two, so this new shaded region, is basically the combination of A and B, is also inside the topology. So that's when we know that the, that, that blob inside X is the topology. If I have two, any two subsets A, B, and I take their intersection, stuff like that, um, and their unions, those two are inside that blob in X. An example of a topology over X is the power set, which is every conceivable subset of X, including itself, and of course, the null set, because every set contains the null set. All right, so what's an example of a topology? All right, so if I have this set one, two, three, so X, one, two, and three, so just think of one, two, three as the, as the natural numbers one, two, three, or the integers one, two, three, or real numbers one, two, three. Don't um, think of, just think of it as how you would think about that, okay? Um, All right, so let X be this one here. So what exam, what's a topology over X or what's tau? So of course, the empty set inside, so there, empty set, the set one, two, three, because that's X itself. We also have um, one, two, and the set three itself. Um, of course, it's also, yeah, actually, this is a good, good enough topology. So this is an example of a topology because, okay, first thing, the empty set is inside it, okay, and X is inside it. So 
that first condition is met. All right, so I'm gonna take two subsets now, one and two, and take their union. Okay, so what is their union? So the union is precisely one, two. All right, so I'm gonna expand this a little because that's not really the topology. So one, two, one, three, and then uh, three, two, and yeah. One, two, one, three, three, two. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, okay, that's it. This is the real topology, sorry. Okay, so why is this exactly a topology? Okay, so, all right, the first condition is met already. I'm gonna take two subsets, one and two, and take their union. So the, the union of one and two here, the set, the singleton sets one and two. What I mean by singleton is just, it's a set containing one element. One union two gives me one two, which is inside the set. This one over here. All right, I'm gonna take the union of one, two, and three. It gives me just X, which is also inside the set. All right, how about three, two, and two, okay? Um, the union of three, two, and two will be three, two, two, but by the definition of a set, elements inside it are non-repeating. So it would just degrade into, or it would devolve into three, two. So it's still inside the set. So it still remains open because you know every member of the topology over X is an open set. So there, this is an example of an open set over X, right? and it is in fact what is called the discrete topology over X because it is power set. So the power set of a set X, right? So uh, still X is a set. The power set of X is a topology. So it's a special type of topology called the discrete topology. So the discrete topology. Now in discrete topology over X is something else. So let's introduce a new terminology. So instead of saying bigger, we'll call it coarser. Um, the, no, the motivation behind this is because of sand, like if you notice that when the sand is, is much more coarser, it is less dense or less like it has, um, it has less, um, less elements inside because it has less particles inside it because the particles are more plump. So we call a set or we call a, yeah, we call a set or a topology finer than another topology when it has a bigger cardinality than that. Uh, topology okay so I have two topologies tau 1 and tau 2 okay t1 is finer than t2 if and only if the cardinality of t1 is greater than the cardinality of t2 or tau 2 and likewise t1 is coarser than tau 2, if and only if the cardinality of tau 2 is greater than tau 1. There. So, coarser and finer. So, you may be thinking, oh, well, how, how does all of this, how does all of this sort of um, connect with the notion of shapes and stuff like that? Well, this is more of a primer in the beginning part. So, Let's skim over a bunch of stuff, which is probably a prerequisite, and let's get to the juicy parts of it all. So there's a joke among us topologists, because topology is mainly the line of um, math that I work in, or at least I study in most of my time. There's a running joke, a very old joke. I know it's getting very, very old. And that joke is that us topologists cannot tell the difference between a donut and a coffee mug. Why is that? I mean, it's clearly not the same. Well, the reason why we think of them as the same is because as said at the beginning, we think of these guys as being composed of a flexible rubber, something like that. Maybe like oobleck or putty or something like that. And the key to thinking of why these two are the same is because I can deform one into the other and because You'll notice that globally, 
you know, zooming out and looking at the entire object, that's what we, we mean by globally, there's only one hole between these two. You may be thinking, oh, what about the, what about the pit inside this um, cup where you pour in your water or your coffee? Well, the thing is, I can bulge that out, right? I can bulge that out and then sort of deform it into this donut. Now, what do you call that action? So what do we call that action of deforming one topological space into another? Oh yeah, one more thing. Okay, so I have X and my topology, right? So X equipped with that topology is a topological space. Okay, so this is what these guys are, topological spaces. That's all we study in topology. Okay, but mostly at least. All right, so, Right, what's the action that we call between deforming one topological space into another? We call that a homeomorphism. Homeomorphism. And it sort of works this almost the same way as a homomorphism for groups. So if a transformation from one group into another is called, and of course, a change of um, structure, or maybe a preservation of structure. Well, if it's a preservation of structure, that's an isomorphism. But if we have a mapping between two groups, that's normally called a homomorphism. Now, a mapping between two topological spaces is a homeomorphism. And the key of homeomorphism is that it works somewhat like a function. It is a bijection, for one, and we can, of course, because, of a, because it's a bijection, we can reverse it. And, yeah, so it's basically deforming one topological space into another, all right? Of course, while preserving the global structure of it all. So when we morph this coffee mug into the donut, um, we don't puncture a hole inside it, right? And this is, that's another reason why the donut is not the same as, say, a two-hole donut. So while these two are the same, these two are not the same. So. Not that, but this, yeah, sure. Because there's an extra hole here um, compared to this one over here. And there's another reason why this donut is not the same as a ball or a sphere. And in your mathematical journey in topology, you will realize that terminologies are much, much more, like being more concise when it comes to terminology is very important. Because one thing that you guys need to note is that the ball, is not the same as the sphere, okay? I know that's, that sounds a bit weird, but trust me when I say that the ball is not the same as the sphere, because a sphere is a set of points that encompass a ball, that bounds a ball. It's essentially the boundary of a ball, while a ball itself is the volume of a sphere. So it's all the points inside a sphere, all right? So the ball and the sphere is not mathematically the same thing. That's what the that's part of the things that topology will teach you. So homeomorphisms. So let's um, so there are many ways of distinguishing topological spaces from another. So I mean we've already done the job. We've already um, defined exactly what we do between topological spaces, but um, without looking, and given only the global properties of a topological space, like say, oh, it has a hole, or it has this structure, how can we differentiate one topo topological space from another? Well, one way of going about that is by constructing something called a fundamental group. So, a fundamental group. So, we're now... We're now digging out of general topology and going and diving into algebraic topology, which is the thing that I study, like the actual thing that I study. So a fundamental group is a group, you know, like you guys would think from our group theory video, um, composed of loops. So loops are what you would think they are. They are lines that end and start at the same point. So something like this is a loop, or maybe something like this is a loop. So long as it's closed and stuff like that, that's a loop. So a fundamental group is a collection of these things, but not precisely those things, but uh, it's a collection of collections of these things that are similar under a new type of deformation called a homotopy or homotopy. Okay. 
So, like how I'm able to deform one topological space into another through a homeomorphism, uh, like say, okay, so another thing to add for homeomorphism is that I can say that a ball or a sphere is the same as a square because I can just bulge out the edges and make sharp corners for the cube. So, yeah. so like I can deform shapes into one another via homo homeomorphism, we can deform these loops into one another called a homotopy. Oh, uh, homotopy. Homotopy. <laughs> I don't know how you guys pronounce it, but homotopy. So, a fundamental group is composed of all possible um, curves that we can, or loops, that we can put on a space, right? That we can embed onto the surface of a space or into the space itself. Um, and those guys are equivalent under homotopy. So, a collection of loops that are that I can deform into one another are called homotopic or they are part of what is a homotopy it's because the homotopy is not precisely a deformation but a collection of curves or maps that I can deform into one another so the essential idea of that is that okay I have my topological space say a donut right the, the goal is to at least um, construct a bunch of loops on it right such that these guys shrink in, keep shrinking until they reach a hole. And then that's when you know there's a hole there. So constructing a fundamental group over a space helps us determine or differentiate um, differentiate spaces with holes and spaces without holes, or maybe even count the holes. But the thing is sometimes this isn't enough to differentiate some topological spaces from another, say more complex spaces, um, or not really complex, I, wish, I shouldn't say, use that word, but more complicated spaces, for example. Yeah, and that's when homology comes into place, but I don't want to go deep into homology because that's more mind-bending than the formal group, and the formal group is already mind-bending enough. So, yeah. Now, for differential topology, um, it's concerned with more of with, you're going to integrate calculus into it or at least differential geometry into it. So this time, we're not only concerned with homeomorphisms or homotopies, but now we're concerned with stuff called diffeomorphisms. So a diffeomorphism is a homeomorphism, it's a type of homeomorphism between two topological spaces such that um, calculus is preserved. So if I can perform calculus or do calculus on one thing, like say construct tangent spaces on one, I can do the same thing in the other structure or the, in the other topological space. I mean, sometimes, um, mostly, I think you would be dealing with metric spaces in, diffi in differential topology and, of course, diffeomorphisms between them two, those two. Now, as for geometric topology, this is more concerned with the visuals of it all, okay? So, I believe this was the more, less boring type of topic for you guys. So. What's one topic in, uh, what's one concept in different, in geometric topology? One concept is called gluing, or constructing a quotient space or identification space between two topological spaces. That's a more formal way of saying it. I mean, not really identification, but a quotient space between two of them. Okay, so gluing. So I have, say, a sphere. And, um... Let's say I want to attach a torus to it. All right, so the first thing we want to do is take away a disc from both of these guys. So, okay, the disc is like the flat version of a ball, okay? There are two versions of a disc, the closed and the open disc. The open disc doesn't contain a circle around it, while a closed disc has a circle that bounds it, okay? So, okay, I'm gonna take a disc that's away from this, so formally, S1 without B, and I have T2 without B. All right, and then I'm gonna take their connected sum, which is denoted by this asterisk over here. And sometimes you, it would be denoted like this. Uh, T2 B. And what I mean by this curly, swirly D in um or yeah sorry 
Necessarily, it does not mean partial derivative, but in topology, it means the boundary of a topological space. So, the boundary of the of this is precisely the the circle. So this is a disc, it's the area, and then the thing that surrounds it is S1. And the reason why I call it S1 is because it's the one-dimensional variant. And here's another thing that you guys will learn in topology, or at least get to understand. That dimensions here, right, topological dimension is different from geometric dimension. Because mostly when you, think, when you say 1D, it's just a line, it's a flat line, okay? And when it's two-dimensional, it's a flat shape, right? Three-dimensionally, it's a three-dimensional shape, right? Like a cube or a sphere in geometry. But in topology, everything sort of gets reduced by one. Every dimension gets reduced by one. Because this shape here, or at least S1, just a circle, is a one-dimensional shape or a topologically one-dimensional space or one-dimensional space because it's just a line, right? That's sort of joined together. And a sphere here is a two-dimensional, yeah, a two-dimensional space. And a three-dimensional space is sort of like a tesseract. A tesseract is a four-dimensional, uh, yeah, geometrically four-dimensional thing, like a, I suppose a hypersphere and or a, a tesseract, those guys are um, uh, three, so of topological dimension three. And of course there's four, which is of dimension five, or geometric dimension five. So that's one weird thing in topology is that dimensions don't work the same way. All right, so going back to attaching a torus onto a sphere, so after we, after we sort of remove these guys and then take their connected summit, it should look somewhat like this. Just grab a tube, so just connect these two together. And, alright, here's the thing. This entire thing is sort of the same as, as if I just put a handle on the sphere. Or a cleaner picture is supposed to be like this. There. Yeah. So it's like I made it into a coffee mug or something like that. So it's the same as this, sort of, so it's home more. And, all right, so another terminology, when a space A and a space B have a homeomorphism between them, we call them homeomorphic. So that means I can deform one to the other and stuff like that. And they are essentially the same thing, topologically speaking. And we, we use this sort of congruence sign, so it's a equal, approximately equal to, right? under a homeomorphism. So that's what we mean here. A and B are homeomorphic. So um, I'm sorry if this lecture hasn't, or this video hasn't been so well structured, but this is sort of a brief travel into the craziness of topology. So yeah, do tell me if you guys want me to discuss more about topology or um, stuff like that, especially also group theory. Um, I would appreciate that. Do leave a comment down below if you guys would want that to happen. And that would be the end for this extras episode. So it's a small taste of topology and its madness and the toll it has taken over my sanity. So this is a good place to stop. <laughs>